everyone, Joe here from Action Eggs. Welcome to What's in the Tube, where it's our show where we review things in the world of, t of TV c series, where normally we do episode-by-episode -episode reviews of currently on-air shows or season-by-season -season shows of long-on-the-air shows or shows that are currently wrapped up. Today we're talking about um, Quick Impressions, uh, which is my series, my, my sub-series where I usually talk about a show that I recently binge. It's not a, like a proper review, per se. Um, certain shows... It depends. Like normally, if I watch like a one season show, I'll, I'll I'll say screw it and just get it out of the way. But normally, it's if it's a binge, I normally just get my quick impressions on it, maybe leaving the door open for a a full series review down the line. Now uh, today we're talking about The Witcher. Flat out, I'll say I enjoyed The Witcher more than Game of Thrones, which I know is blasphemy, and technically, it's uh, I I I, I discovered one thing as watching The Witcher. I am not a medieval fan. I am really am not. And I just finally realized that watching The Witcher. And to, to be frank, I have I, in terms of like my medieval history, I, I've only watched selective amounts of content from that world, whether it is the Middle Earth series or Game of Thrones, uh, its upcoming spinoff, uh, ha House of the Dragon, and now The Witcher. I've noticed that, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of it. I'm really not. It's just something, It's I think it's the one genre of, yeah, just, <clears throat> I'm not into it. Like, I, I really am not. I think Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit are different, sort of thing, where I know when I say this with blasphemy, I know from the Middle Earth fans, I prefer The Hobbit more than Lord of the Rings. I think the Lord of the Rings, I, 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 I will give it this, I do owe that film franchise another go around. Yes, I know, another basically day-long marathon to give it a re-review uh an updated opinion because i did watch that while i was in high school so my my thoughts have changed a little bit maybe i'll enjoy it this time around but i i still do enjoy the hobbit films over um the lord of the rings i think it's just the style of comedy and just um how i, I guess maybe it's the modern sense of it i really don't know but i know lord of the rings definitely was not my style i watched it because it was just an obligation for watching the whole hobbit trilogy that i kind of needed to to watch it at the end of the day i kind of have to admit that in my personal opinion and then going into game of thrones where again i, I did a quick impression on that um uh, in our first year of what's in the two when i did that show when i did that um that uh, quick impressions for it i went into that hoping that because i've heard of course at the time amazing things about game of Thrones, where it was a, a overhypedness to the overhypedness of levels and by the time i got into it i was just so my expectations were like a little bit too high because I was expecting to binge throughout the entire series in maybe a, like a few weeks to a month. It took me almost a year and some shit. Now, actually, I think more than a year to binge the show because it was every season took it was sluggish for me. It took me a while. I would have moments within seasons two, three, four, five where like I was very heavily interested, but it it, it lost me pretty quickly and then I, I just had to power through the last season where, oh my god, that... I don't even want to get started on that. That was just like the oof, I don't want I don't want to get started on that. But so going back to here for The Witcher, I mainly watched The Witcher for a, a few reasons. Number one, I've heard great things about the show. I, it, it's not this masterpiece. It is not. It is just very much a really good adaption. It's not a video game adaption. It's it's a book adaption and a video game adaption. It kind of combines both worlds in a little bit where you kind of have the look of. Gerald from the games because that's just the more that's the iconography from that series and then you mostly are basing it off the books which were pre-existing of the game the um the the studio behind the CD Projekt Red adapted um the books into the games so there's kind of like a, a big Lee Willer this is kind of like the new third pillar where it just works I'm not saying The Witcher is perfect. I, I think out of all the medieval stuff I mentioned, I think I will still go back and watch the Hobbit trilogy any day of the week. But The Witcher is a solid number two on my, if I was to watch something medieval or something in that um, genre of things, it would be that one. It just, it's simplified to the point where it's like you don't have this complex web of characters. And I understand when you're telling a grand epic story in Game of Thrones, you kind of have to since you have multiple houses and multiple characters and you want to keep the storylines engaging and kind of guessing. And then, but the problem with that is like when you have too many characters, you kind of eventually risk oversaturating what you're able to get. And then by the time you get the things you want, it's not really on the same impact. 
if that makes a little bit of sense. I, I, if that the where I remember, I understand what Game of Thrones was doing, trying to like build out the the lore and the world, so that when we eventually do get to the big final, you know, peak, we're always wondering to guess who is going to be the true rightful heir of the throne. And at the end of it, it was just okay. Really wasn't that. Uh, it wasn't that big like revelation that I think everyone went into. And I think that's where The Witcher succeeds is that it focuses, it, it basically narrows, narrows it down to the cliche trio. Like you get the three main characters and that's it. And it works. It's very simple for my brain where you don't have to jump through many storylines. I Keep in mind, it's definitely a show I will probably not rewatch. Maybe when season three comes out, maybe I'll give it an, another fresh watch just to understand it a little bit more. Because this is one of those things where I kind of do need to rewatch it multiple times for me to fully get the story. I feel like I got the gist of it and but mostly it was the characters. And I say this for every time I review anything that um the show could be a uh, the story could be a, a piece of crap. But if the characters are engaging enough and they they have a direction, they have like motivation and they have some sort of character development, then that's what keeps me going. If it doesn't, then I'm more of like okay, what's the point in watching it? Or what's the point in paying attention? Because there's a lot, a lot of shows I watch, I, I watch because I, it, it's not, it's story driven, but it's not developing the characters enough for me to even care. It's just kind of rotating its wheels by a certain point. Thankfully, The Witcher, even in two seasons, it has not had that. There's still a bit of like, you know, plot stuff that I'm still like not getting per se. Cause, and maybe this is the typical medieval stuff where like it's multiple factions, multiple sides fighting a war. And that's kind of what the gist of it. Uh, I'm still not understanding the motivations of everyone. Hell, I, even in Game of Thrones, after eight seasons, I still don't get what the motivations were at the end of the day. You could say it was pettiness. You could say it was greed, um, selfishness power loss you can say any of that um uh, maybe maybe that, that is from from what the witcher is but who knows uh, again I'll, I'll give a full if i ever do like a season to season review of it i will be of course more in depth and of course i'll be more into it than i am now because right now i'm just I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the the um the aftertakes of the characters of the, of the trio itself after 16 episodes of television i just watched with them and it took me a while so much to game of thrones to get me into it um I think the only thing I will say in its benefit is season two is better than season one. Where normally the later you go in a show, the more difficult it gets to top the first season. I think the first season was like mediocre at best. I don't think it was amazing. I don't think it was great. I think maybe uh, it was good. It was good at the end of the day. It was serviceable to introduce these characters, uh, get you this introduction in the world, and it just it just works so to speak. It worked. Also, before I mention, I will only be spoiling anything in the first episode. Anything beyond the in the other 15 are not going to be touched about. I'll, I'll only give vague references or just vague things, but there will be no deep spoilers um, to anything that is in episode one. So don't worry. If you haven't seen The Witcher yet, you're perfectly good um, to go. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So season one, I think was it just did it, 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 it its purpose. It definitely was just the popularity sake of like it's another video game adaption because The Witcher is more known nowadays for its vi it, for the video games developed by CG Project Red, and not really much of the books. Yes, literature is still a thing. I do get that literature is still a damn thing. We, we, we you should still read a book. I don't read books, but it's still a thing. But mainly, if you mention The Witcher, people are just going to mention The Witcher Three, which is the still one of the most popular selling games of all time. So that not being surprised, just being curious because like, we're in this new stage of Hollywood or in like uh, media adaptions where we're getting closer to not a faithful, a, a respectful adaption where you have properties like Sonic the Hedgehog and Detective Pikachu, where those are films that are truly honoring the source material, but not for the sake of making a quick buck or two. They're using it in the benefit of the story, in the lore and making it a, a product that is worthy of the name from the original franchise it is. I will safely say The Witcher does honor it. Even though I've never played The Witcher games or never read the books, I do think they did a really good job of it. Um, I know going into into my research of it, I know Henry Cavill, who portrays um, Gerald of Riviera, I know he is a massive nerd, which I'm like, how is this hunk of a man able to play Superman and a freaking, and he's still that deep into like the, 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 the nerdy stuff. I'm really, I'm really like, 
you never really know what people, like, you look at a buff that you just assume they're into sports, cars, you know, that sort of thing. You'd be surprised at who's actually interested in what. And I give a lot of credit to him that uh, he's apparently like so versed in, in the, in the, in the Lord that I think I read somewhere that in one of the scripts in one of the film, in the filming blocks for this, for one of the seasons, he changed one of the lines to like a line from the book and he was able to recite what exact chapter it was. And I was like, bruh, you know, you get the right actor who knows what they're doing. And there's cases in Hollywood where like they, they only cast popular actors to portray the roles because it's a money grab. They're just trying to get the most popular people involved so that the average Joe Schmo, in my case, to go see the movie, then maybe has had no interest in any other um, um, medium of this work. It, it 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 works. It makes it makes the most sense in terms of money, so I'm not really surprised by that front. But here it, it just worked. It, like you have Henry Cavill, who I think my normal co-host on many 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 of my videos. Um, it's just George here. Uh, he proclaims that he literally only sees Henry Cavill as Gerald and not Superman anymore. Which I'm like, that's fair. That's fair. I think he's been more consistent as Gerald than Superman. So. I think that's also kind of, it's, you know, it's a, the, the DC stuff is a whole nother conversation for another day. So I think he does, does very well in the job. He's very stoic, very private, very reserved. But he does have an emotional side like many other people, like many other um, stoic, heroic types are. He has a vulnerable side. <clears throat> and that only comes into play when a special woman comes into a life that will und undoubtedly cause him pain, suffering, but also love. And that's also um, Yennefer. Uh, I don't know the actress's name for Yennefer and Suri. I apologize. Um, they, this is kind of like my introduction to them as a character, but they're, they're, they're great too. Uh, Yennefer has her own backstory. I think Yennefer is like, kind of like, we get the most out of her after Gerald. Uh, we get to know about her origin story a bit more lengthy than Gerald's. Gerald's is kind of more like, you know, simplistic and kind of like, you know, just dropping the seeds. Um, Yennefer is kind of like a more tragic backstory. There's one thing I really want to mention, and I literally texted this to George when it was happening. I, and I was like, I want to say it's so bad, but it technically counts as a spoiler, so I'm not going to say it. But there's a moment in the middle of the season where I thought, so she basically got redacted in her for her to have this massive change in her life. That's all I'll say. If you understand what the heck that means, um, feel free to comment. But honestly, as a character, um, Yennefer falls into the side of, I want to say it's kind of like I bring this up in recent memory because it just is the new hot thing of Scarlet Witch and Multiverse of Madness or in the MCU where you you understand she's trying to do good but some of her actions are not really classified as good and again it comes to that murky you know the great conversation I always say in a lot of my more recent video where like is there really such a thing about a good versus evil it's more about this is what I believe versus what you believe uh in my story, I'm the hero, but in your story, you're the hero, and on the opposite side, we're the villains. That's kind of how I view it as a thing, where I think Yennefer does have her true intentions of, like, trying to do good, but it's just the actions that she tries to take are a little too extreme, and that does give her a, into opposition with Gerald by the time they start clashing in the series. Especially when it comes to the topic of Surrey, of Sur Cersei or Surrey? I think it's Surrey. And what the fuck is landing on my arm? I keep feeling stuff on my arm. Anyway. Uh, as for Suri, it, it, I think definitely she was the more confusing character for me, uh, in my opinion. Like, I, I now understand what her purpose is in the story, uh, but it was just early on. And another, another thing, the way they framed season one in terms of, like, this, the timeline, I'll, I'll say it as vague as that, it confused me for a while. Like, I was superbly confused, because I don't think they ever gave dates or years in the in the episodes. I, for me, I just didn't read tech, any sort of text fonts. But even when I was seeing that, I was, like, confused, like, what the heck was going on, and, and it, it took me a while to understand what the heck was really going on, and it was a weird storytelling device, I did appreciate they kind of, like, cut that out in season two, they kind of just streamlined it a little bit just to make it more simplistic for the fans to just pay attention to the co to the coherent story that's happening, uh, but again, maybe if I rewatch season one with, like, a more time has passed perspective, maybe I'll get, I'll understand a little bit more, but as of right now, I, I really did not get why they use that, that story trope that, that much, in my opinion. Uh, because by the time we get to season two, it's, it's, it's more strained now, like, we have this, this core, like, identity of the show, and we kind of just start sculpting the story around it, and kind of start 
making the episodes better. I think season two is leagues better than season one in terms of the action, in terms of the story, um, the direction we're going in. And I really liked it a lot. I really did. I, 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 I don't think this show's ever excellent at points. I, I never, I never said it was like, wow, that is so great. That was so cool. I never had any of those moments, but I will admit that it was at least consistent that, that there is a consistent quality between season one and season two that by the time it's over, I'm like, I would have been okay to binge season three right now if it was available. I would have. It, it definitely would have not have been something that I would have immediately watched. I think it took me over three weeks to watch The Witcher because I, I just did not get as hooked as I, as people thought I would. I, it, it just did it. it. It just cemented the point where like medieval genres is not my is not my cup of tea. Ironically, that reminds me my cup of tea. But I will respect if, like, in the future, I, I know The Witcher is getting a spinoff, a prequel spinoff called Blood Origin. Will I watch it? I don't know. I'm still very iffy on it. I, I am watching House of Dragons only because of Matt Smith, because we're doing every Doctor Who series review. Go check that out on the channel as well. Um, and also, it's Game of Thrones. So it's like, I'm just curious to see what a post um, book adaption world looks like for that universe. I don't think it's going to do well, but guess what? Um, I'm just curious to see if it's going to be another success story or if it's going to be a train wreck. We'll we'll figure that out very soon. But uh, for me as the viewer, I'm medieval is just like uh, for some reason I prefer westerns more than medieval stuff. It, it it's so weird because I just do not have the taste for medieval stuff. I, I really do. I know some a couple of my friends were trying to get me into Elden Ring. And I was like that's just that that's just that's just not me. Like, I think I tried Skyrim before as an example of just medieval set um, video games, for example. And I just could never click with it. Like, I think I did, like, a full hour or so playing Skyrim and I just got completely bored. It just is not my cup of tea. I think by this point, I just have to accept that after The Witcher, that's it. Whatever is already pre-established in my life, if it's not a spinoff or a sequel or a prequel or whatever, I, I'm just not inclined to, to watch it. It's just... It just isn't me. You'd be surprised sometimes. Um, I, w I literally was about to have no interest in Squid Games. Um, but Or Squid Game. I apologize. Uh, but I watched it and I somehow enjoyed it. It was weird. It, it just was not my cup of tea on the get-go. But then I, I went into it with a, with a clear perspective. Just very a neutral um, standpoint. And I enjoyed it. I don't think it was the best show I've ever made. But it was really, really good. And it was really engaging. The Witcher is good with its characters. I am not engaged with the story at all. Again, maybe that's just because I'm just not understanding of the world, or maybe it's just not something my brain naturally accustoms to. Because I'm not, I'm not really used to medieval stuff. I'm usually into like the superhero uh, world, the mystery stuff. Like that's my usual cup of tea. Like I can sit down and watch any mystery show because I'm just curious to see what the, what the end result's going to be. But when it comes to medieval stuff now, at this point, I just I really don't get interested. Like I don't even know anymore. Like. You have to do some really interesting takes or directions with it for me to be interested. Um, the last thing I mentioned, and this is this is my kind of a little bit of a Game of Thrones spoiler, so I apologize. But when they killed off Ned Stark at the end of season one, I was like, "Wow!" Like I thought Ned was going to be the main. I, I, I knew, like you know, I didn't see him in any of the later posters, so I'm like, "Okay, is he really still around, or are they just really hiding him?" And they killed him off in season one because I thought, like, it's going to be the cliche trope. Someone's going to save him at the last minute. And then we're going to go into a, to a very epic season two with them on the run. No, he just dies. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that, those are the types of moments where, like, okay, now you got me interested in your show. But you have to keep the momentum going. And the the very, very last thing I mentioned is that when, they, when the Arrowverse got quasi rebooted or quasi revamped with crisis infinite earths it was like interesting for like the first few months of like seeing like what are the crisis um after effects and how is that impacting the shows and at the end of the day like they only used them for like a few episodes and then afterward they kind of went back to the status quo it's like the events of crisis never really occurred or doesn't really it's like an afterthought which for me it's like well if any were endgame like uh, made a huge mark on the mcu going forward you really can never forget that because it was such a monumental point in the history of that universe, that how can you forget a, such a thing like that? Whereas in like for Crisis, it was just um, they literally had a crisis, and now it's just a fluff mention. It literally, if they mention it, it's like oh we we did this thing. It's like it's not supposed to just be a thing. It's supposed to be this serious moment where people die and like big sacrifices were made, and you just act like it was nothing. Uh, 
But you know, I get it. You know, at the end of the day, um, it, there's only so much you can do. We're in we're in the year of 2022 at the time of this recording. Maybe someone's watching this in the near future. But this is where I am right now. I view this more as like the more deeper you get into the lifetime to the life, it gets more and more difficult to do something original or do a fresh take on something. It becomes very more difficult that you rely on the familiar tropes to. Be safe. Like, you'll get a good show out of it if the characters are engaging enough. But when it comes to story or doing something groundbreaking in this genre, it's very, very, very rare nowadays to find something like that. Maybe it's just the right creative force hasn't gotten into it yet. Who knows? It just... For The Witcher, just to, like, put a pin on this. The Witcher follows familiar medieval tropes, and I think it's more coherent and, and better for me than Game of Thrones. It just isn't that engaging for me at the end of the day to be hyped or excited for season three i will watch season three i will watch the spin-off but i won't be inclined to tune in live or tune in at the start because it just isn't something that i'm superbly pushing to see asap it just isn't um so for me in terms of my recommendation i think the witcher is okay um uh, if you're bored one weekend and you just need like a new binge the witcher will satisfy your crate if you're if you got the hots for henry cavill go check it out um it's definitely it's not game of thrones uh, it, it it has its own identity. It is d different, but it's familiar. It, it's still in that medieval familiar sense. So, but beyond that, it does do its own thing. It is engaging in its own right, and um, I would I would be more inclined to rewatch this than Game of Thrones any day of the week. So, uh, that's my take on it. Um, so for me, I'll say if you're bored, I recommend. It. If you if you have a choice, there's tons of other shows out there for you to binge. But that's just my take on that's just my take on it. Um, so let me know in the comments below. What did you think of The Witcher? Have you watched it yet? What were your thoughts on it? If you're more inclined to, to watch The Witcher after hearing my thoughts on it, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to talk to y'all. So I believe that's going to do for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware of this has been What's the Two from Action X, um, talking about The Witcher only on Netflix. So go check it out there. If you want to know what we're doing normally What's the Two besides our quick impressions, like we did for The Witcher, uh, we're currently doing rookie reviews. Uh, Walker episode reviews and also Under the Banner of the Sun episode review. Oh, Under the Banner of, of, of Heaven episode reviews each and every week at the brand new episodes on uh, ABC, The CW, and Hulu. So go check that out there. Uh, please also like, favor, share this review if you want to. Please also follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates we may have for the channel. Ring the bell for notification when our next video is live. And of course, subscribe to us only on youtube.com slash actionx videos. So until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.